Hi, my name is Bjorn Kvole and I'm a product marketing engineer here at Nordic Semiconductor. In this video, we'll look at how you can get started with your NRF 9160 development kit and get it connected to Nordic's NRF Cloud platform. This video is based on the Getting Started Guide, which you'll find on our product page. Unbox the development kit. In it, you should have an NRF 9160 DK, an iBasis SIM card, and a quick start guide. Please check to make sure your computer fulfills the minimum hardware and software requirements. You need an NRF 9160 DK, a nano LP WAN SIM that supports LTM and narrowband IoT, and a micro USB cable. For software, you need Microsoft Windows 10, the latest version of macOS, or the latest LTS version of Ubuntu Linux. To make life easier for yourself, write down the NRF9160 DK device ID and PIN and the SIM ICC ID and PUC codes in a text editor. You'll need this later. The device ID is NRF dash followed by the 15 digit IMEI code. This can be found on the white sticker on the back of your NRF9160 DK. Uh, the PIN, which is six digits, can also be found on that white sticker. The SIM ICC ID, which is between 18 and 22 digits, and PUC codes, eight digits, are on the SIM card. Uh, the codes are case sensitive, and please do not share this information with anyone. Insert the SIM card into the DK SIM slot. Power in the micro USB cable on both the PC and the DK. And check that switch five in the middle of the DK is set to the NRF91 side. Then, Power on the DK. If you're using the iBasis SIM card, navigate to nordicsemi.com slash iBasis to download the iBasis network coverage spreadsheet. There, you can find your country and whether the iBasis card supports LTM and or narrowband IoT in your region. First off, we will update the application firmware and the modem firmware on the NRF9160 SIP located on the NRF9160 development kit. NRF Connect for Desktop is a cross-platform framework for developing applications available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. We'll be using both the Programmer and LT Link Monitor applications available in NRF Connect for Desktop, so make sure to install both. Okay, so now I'll just quickly show you how to get here. Just Google NRF Connect for Desktop. Click on the first one. Here you can read a bit more get an overview. So if you just click on downloads, then you can choose the one that you want. For me, that's Windows. Okay, let's open it up there. And then install it. Click yes. Okay, so now you can see it's open. Um, if you haven't already installed the program app, you'll see install. Um, if you've already installed it, you'll see this open button instead. Um, so basically, I'll just install the programmer quickly. Okay, so now that one's installed, and I'll also install LT Link Monitor. And if you don't have the latest version, you'll see an update button here. So if you can see that update button, please update uh, the application. Um, if you click on the downward arrow, you can see more info, release notes, create a shortcut and uninstall. Um, so that's useful. Okay, but for now, let's just open up the programmer application. Okay. So next up, we'll enter the link found on the NRF9160 DK box or in the quick start guide. So that's nordicsemi.com start 9160 DK. And now what we can do, let's go over to the downloads tab and here we can see the latest uh, application and modem firmware. So just download the latest version. If you wanna see a change log, you can see it here. So let's just download this. Okay, let's open it up and let's unzip this. Let's open up that. And here we can see three different folders as well as the modem firmware zip file. 
and this stands for modem firmware NRF 9160 and then the latest version which is version 1.3.2 as of right now. Uh, if you open up the contents.txt you can see a bit more information so you can see it was built using NRF Connect SDK version 200 and you can see the three different folders I mentioned so this one is includes full application images with a bootloader and this one here is only the application no bootloader and the file format is the hex format this one's very similar only in binary format instead uh, if we scroll down a bit and zoom out we can see the different paths with the different files um, and a description for each um, so for right now we're actually interested in these three here hex files uh, ltm narrowband out and narrowband out uh, legacy um, so i can just open that up quickly so we're interested in one of these three files so that's it for now and you can ignore the rest of the files for now so let's open up the programmer select device select the dk and you can see it's ready now and let's update the modem firmware so i can just go to the um, downloaded zip file the extracted folder and then just click open on the zip file you can see it's selected now and now what we can just do is press right okay so that's completed in 48 seconds and you should see this green window saying completed successfully in x number of seconds um, now we can close this so now to update the application firmware, click on add file, browse, uh, go to the right folder, there's uh, this one, uh, image app BL, and now you have a choice between uh, three different uh, hex files. Um, so depending on the SIM card and the network coverage in your region, you'll either need to flash LTM or narrowband out firmware to your kit. Um, only flash the legacy PCO if you're sure your narrowband IoT network does not support ePCO. So for most narrowband IoT networks, try the ePCO variant uh, first. So for me, I'm in a region that supports LTM, so I'll choose this one. So you might get this error. Um, it's not an issue, you can still proceed. Um, so now what we'll do is press erase and write. And once this pattern disappears, you'll know it's done. You can also see a bit more in the log. So yeah, now you can see it's ready. So the device is loaded, ready for further um, operation. The Asset Tracker V2 application, which we just flashed to the NRF9160 DK, collects various data on the DK and then bulk transmits it to our cloud solution, NRF Cloud, via the LTM narrowband IoT network, where it's then visualized on the NRF Cloud web interface. Um, so first off, we're going to go to nrfcloud.com. Um, register an account if you do not already have one. Um, if you already have an account, just press login. Next, we'll activate the iBasis SIM card and connect our device. Uh, select the plus sign in the upper left hand corner and select LT device. Uh, now we can input the SIM ICC ID and PUC code. You should have written this down on a text editor. So I'll just copy and paste that quickly. And also make sure to read the iBasis terms and privacy policy before you check mark. And then what you can do is uh, press activate SIM. If you are using a different SIM card, you can click on skip this step. Uh, just remember to activate your SIM card before moving further. Um, some cards do require activation, while others may already be activated by your operator. But this information is usually included when you get the SIM. So for me, I'm going to use an iBasis, so I'll just press activate SIM. Now 
Now you just input the information here. And once you're happy with that, you can either press save. You can also skip this step. And now you can see the SIM has been activated successfully. Once the DK is powered on, the modem does an LT connection search and LED1 will blink. Uh, during the cloud association, LED3 double pulse blinks, and during the cloud connection process, LED3 may triple pulse blink. Um, please note that the process of connecting to the network can take up to several minutes the first time, so be patient. Um, once you see the LED3 double pulse blink, you can fill in the add LT device screen. Um, so just enter the device ID and PIN. Um, you should have written those down previously from your text document. Just copy and paste those. Uh, you don't need to press the device groups and just click add device. So here you can see the different sensor data that is sent to NRF Cloud. So you can see the, the device information, you can see the device configuration, so different configuration settings that are set in the Asset Tracker V2. You can also see the device shadow in addition to the firmware update history if you do firmware over the air updates. You can also see the terminal in addition to the RSRP, and you can also see the location. So the location is based on our NRF Cloud location services, and we support both GPS and cell-based locationing in addition to Wi-Fi-based locationing. But feel free to click on the link here to learn more about NRF Cloud Location Services. As you can see from this example, um, I do have my 91DK very close to a window. So if you want to try out GPS-based positioning, make sure you're close to a window, ideally outside with an open view of the sky. And then the Asset Tracker example will try to get both GPS-based locationing in addition to cell-based locationing. So here in this example, we do have uh, the GPS fix here. The office is located right here in Oslo. So you can see the GPS fixes are very accurate. The cell-based fixes, so in this case, it's basically using different cell towers, multiple cell towers to get a location estimate. So the multi-cell based locationing is slightly less accurate, but it is also more power efficient than um, GPS based locationing. Okay, so now you've hopefully been able to successfully connect your NRF 9160DK to NRF Cloud. Um, so now you can scroll by the video and you can click on the next steps in the getting started with NRF 9160DK documentation. You can either click here or here. Um, and here's there's more information. If you want to learn more about the Asset Tracker V2, you can just click on updating the DK firmware and then click on the Asset Tracker V2 for more documentation. Um, for now, we can also just quickly scroll down here to next steps. Uh, so these are some great links for developing with the NRF 9160DK. And also we have some introductory documentation uh, regarding the NRF Connect SDK and the development environment. Under here, I just want to quickly highlight the NRF Connect SDK fundamentals course. Um, so this is a great course for learning the fundamentals, learning the basics of the NRF Connect SDK. And it is self-paced, which is very great if you have a busy schedule. Um, moving on to the cloud services. If you want to learn more about cloud services, you can always go to nordicsemi.com. And then you can, the easiest way is just forward slash cloud services and click on that. You can also click on products and then cloud services to get here. And this, this gives a nice overview of NRF Cloud and the different services we provide. We also have a nice uh, webinar on uh, how cloud helps your IoT devices to get location data, and then more information on the location services and uh, FOTA too. Um, moving on to some troubleshooting tips. If you have any issues at all updating the application or modem firmware, 
Let's just open up the programmer app, app quickly. You can always restart the programmer app by pressing Control R for Windows and Linux or Command R for Mac OS. And the same applies to all of the other NRF Connect for desktop applications. Um, if it did not work to connect your NRF 9160 DK to NRF Cloud and you are unable to add your device for some reason, you'll most likely see all four LEDs blinking, which indicates an error. Uh, in this case, you can open up LT Link Monitor. So if we just go back to NRF Connect for desktop quickly and open up the LT Link Monitor application. Um, so this is a great place to find debug information. So let's select the device, click on the NRF 9160DK. And now we can actually see more uh, debug information on what is happening inside the Asset Tracker V2 application. Um, so for now, I'm just going to quickly turn off the modem and then press the reset button on the NRF 9160 DK. Let's turn off terminal auto scroll. Uh, so now you should be able to see um, debug information like app event start, modem event initialize, modem event LT connecting. Should also be seeing, let's see, modem event LT connected, uh, cloud event connecting, and cloud event connected. Um, if you're not seeing modem event LT connected, there's most likely something wrong with either your SIM card, your chosen network, or your coverage, and you should contact your network provider. If you're not seeing any logging info in the LT Link Monitor application with the NRF 9160DK, just press the reset button on the DK. And regarding iBasis, if you're using the iBasis SIM card, if we go back to the uh, start 9160, just the URL on the NRF9160 DK box. Uh, you can click on the coverage map here for more information on where the iBasis SIM card uh, has um, coverage. So which countries, uh, where the test locations are, whether LTM or narrowband IoT is supported and also PSM and EDRX support. And remember, you can always look at previous answers on DevZone or create your own ticket and get in contact with one of our highly qualified engineers. Thank you and have a nice day.